Good morning. My name is Chandra Giri. I work uh, for USCS Arrows and also uh, based in Duke University. Um, I will be presenting Global Mangrove. This is uh, one of the most comprehensive uh, global mangrove database that we prepare using Landsat. And this is uh, one of the first example of Landsat datasets at a global scale. And um, a lot of people ask me why mangrove. You see that they are only maybe less than 1% of the total forest area of the world. But they play a very important role in terms of providing ecosystem goods, goods and services. One example, they protect from natural disasters like tsunamis and hurricanes. And another example is uh, carbon sequestration. They can sequester uh, three or four uh, times uh, more carbon than other tropical forests. At the same time, they are uh, um, also um, endangered because of the coastal development as well as climate change. Um, if you look at their distribution, they are distributed mostly in tropical and subtropical region of the world, and uh, mostly you know my, uh, plus minus uh, 10 degree latitude. And uh, the, here is the, uh, the cumulative percentage of the global mangroves. 75 percent of the mangroves can be found in just 15 countries. Uh, 23 per six, uh, a quarter of uh, of that is in Indonesia. So um, if if I go back to this one. You know, when you map uh, these areas, and you know, like earlier, wh what you used to do is download the full, full Landsat scene. Whereas, you know, in some areas, only 10% of the Landsat scene contains the mangrove. So it was so much work, like downloading all the Landsat scene and, and subsetting uh, those small areas and classifying and, and so on. So, so we've been using Google Earth Engine uh, and, and uh, so that we don't need to download uh, each individual Landsat scenes. And, and this data is, uh, the, the global data is available from uh, Earth Engine as well. Um, so uh, our goal is to uh, monitor um, the whole world on an annual basis. So we quickly realized that we need to do two types of approaches. One is that we want to map every five years. At the same time, we want to do some spectral changes every year. And then we combine these two and produce the, the annual map. That way, I think we can, we can produce better maps. Uh, here is an example of Florida. We just finished uh, with uh, every five years from uh, 1980 to 2015. Mangrove is uh, changing. It's a very high, a dynamic ecosystem. Um, and, and we have some results coming out of this. And, and the graph here shows uh, the mangrove in Louisiana. And it's, uh, it fluctuates a lot because uh, of, of the absence or presence of the winter freeze. And uh, there was a major winter freeze in 1983. Uh, all the mangroves were killed, and it, it was uh, replaced by salt marsh. It's, it's uh, getting back, but not, uh, it, it has not reached to the 1983 level. And um, here is an example of the Texas. The mangroves are expanding quite fast in, in Texas. And, and we want to look at what is the implication in terms of uh, uh, ecosystem goods and services, for example, uh, carbon sequestration. Um, and um, uh, uh, this is an example from uh, an, an the northern area of the Australia. Again, here the, it, uh, it is expanding. Um, it, the total uh, mangrove area uh, has been increasing through time. So we're going back all the way to 80s to 2010 here in this case. But our goal is to uh, do now and, and also in the future uh, every year. Um, so again, using two approaches where we, we classify the mangrove using uh, supervised classification, in, in this case, a decision tree classification every five years, and do some spectral changes uh, to, uh, classification uh, every year, and combine those two in, in, and produce uh, the annual uh, mangrove change database. 